the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome to Open Heavens Devotional Review for today, Friday, the 4th of November, 2022. I'm Ken Demaja Open Heavens is authored by adding the Lord Pastor E.A. Adeboye, the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. Open Heavens is a guide to a close fellowship with God. Let us pray. Our Father, we want to say thank you for another opportunity to be counted among the living. Thank you for your wondrous works. Thank you for how far you have been with us. We raise our Ebenezer, our Ebenezer Brana. We say up until this point, you have been our help. Father, we pray, O oh Lord, that you will teach us your word today, that you will speak to us yourself, that the wonder-working power of your word will find expression in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The topic for today is, do you love God? Do you love God? Our memory verse is taken from the book of 1 John 4 verse 8. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. Our Bible reading shall be taken from the same book of John, 1 John 4 verse 7 to 24. 1 John 4 verse 7 to 24. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us his spirit, and we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them, and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will co have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love. But perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because we, he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God, yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister, whom they have seen, cannot love God, whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command, anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. May the Lord bless the reading of his words in our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. The message, whether you love God or not, is not known by your claim, but rather your attitude to his word. John 15 verse 4 says, Ye are friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Ye are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Do you obey the commands of the Lord? If you do, then you love God. However, if you don't, then you don't love him. In John, if John 14 verse 15 he said, If ye love me, keep my commandment. In John 15 12, Jesus told us one of those commandments you must keep if you say you love God which is John 15 verse 12 this is my commandment that ye love one another as I have loved you now that is a hard commandment to keep because some people are just so hard to love this is why at our ministers conference in Nigeria I always tell the attendees to say to the fellow sitting next to them I love you compulsory. On one occasion, one person was sitting next to someone who just offended him. So he said, I love you compulsory, you stupid fellow. The people around him may be hard to love, but you must love them. You have no choice if you really want to love God. When he says, love one another as I have loved you, you see how difficult that is when you read 1 John 3.16. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. 
you therefore see that our excuses for not preaching the gospel to others who are heading to hell are flimsy. If you love them just as Jesus loves you, you will be willing to lose anything so that they will not go to hell. It is because some missionaries lay down their lives to preach the gospel that you are on your way to heaven today. This is why it is so hard for you to do the same. Why is it so hard for you to do the same for someone else? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In the open heavens of today, we are being asked a question. Do you love God? You know, we are being asked if we truly love God or not. Do you love God? And um, like Adadi has also told us that loving God is known by through our attitudes. You know, it is not by claiming it, by saying, yes, I love God or, you know, but it is through our attitude to what? To his word, to our attitude to his word. And his word, according to John 15 verse 14 says, "Ye are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you to do. So if we want to say we love God, then we should have an attitude of obedience to his word. We should have an attitude of obedience to his commandments to us. Praise to Lord. Hallelujah. And also, for emphasis sake, the, the book of John 14 verse 15 also says, If you love me, you keep my commandment. So our attitude should be that of keeping the commandment of the Lord. Obeying his commandment, keeping his commandment. Praise to Lord. And how do we, what, what's that commandment of the Lord? If you look at John 15 verse 12, he says, This is my commandment, that he love one another. As I have loved you. So it is our God, the Lord is telling us that we demonstrate our love to Him. If we also look at the Bible reading that we read today, the, the Lord is telling us that we love, we show Him that we love Him because we can only say that we love Him by exhibiting His character. And His character is a character of love. And we can say that God lives in us only when we love one another. Praise the Lord. So, and how do we love one another? It is not like the worldly standard. It is not like the world loves. The world loves you now, maybe because you have done something good for them, then they decide to love you. But we love according to the way God has loved. You know, the, the, the standard is so high. The standard is according to how our God has loved. So we can't say we are children of God when we can't love like Him. I pray that the grace to love as God has loved, the Lord will give unto us in the name of Jesus Christ. And like our daddy has said, he said, this is a hard commandment to keep. You know, it is a hard commandment to keep. This is because it's a lot, people are difficult to love. In short, one of the reasons is because once you are bent on loving people, those people that you say you want to love, they are the ones that want to show you hatred, that they do not love you. So as you are showing you, you them love, they might be showing you another part of them. So it, you, you might be frustrated at loving them. But then because it, it shows that we have the, you know, the life of God in us. You know, and that is why we must love compulsorily. Like Adadi said that when he goes for the conference, he ensures that he speaks to the minister. That they should speak to that person next to them. That I love you compulsorily. Because it is not a love that, you know, that has condition attached to it regardless of what people have done for you or done to you you must love them because the devil even knows that loving your neighbor loving your brother and your sister is actually the ticket to making it to heaven so he wants to frustrate you he knows that he might not be able to influence what you would do but he wants to influence the other person so that you can be frustrated in loving that person but we must know that it is a commandment it is compulsory that we love our, our brothers and our sisters. We love them in the way the Lord God has loved. How has God loved? The word of God, as we in what we read today, made us understand that He was the first, He loved us first, not we loving Him. And when, when God loves us first, He says, While we were yet sinner, Christ died for us. God demonstrated that love by giving us his only begotten son. So it is not, you, you are not loving because somebody has done you any good thing. 
but you are loving because you are a child of God, because you have the nature of God in you. You know, because loving is eternal. You know, it is the greatest thing that any man, any man can have. And that is what it is exhibiting the attitude of Christ. And I pray that the Lord will help us in exhibiting love, in exhibiting his nature, which is love. Amen. And so that we can confidently say indeed that we love God. Amen. If we also look at the book of John 3 verse 16, we can see how we will love. And this is also telling us so that we can know that it is not, you know, Christianity is not for the faint-hearted. But then you have to keep at it. You have to continue at it regardless of what anybody is saying, regardless of what people are throwing at you. I pray that the grace to love to the very end, the Lord will give unto us in the name of Jesus. Amen. He says, Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. So we are to love our brethren. How did God love? He loved us even while we were yet sinners. He loved us in so much a way that he laid down his life for us. So we, are, we likewise are to love in such a way that we are laying down our lives for our brothers and our sisters. Praise the Lord. So like I, Daddy has said, so we do not have excuse to say, Oh, I did not preach to that man or that woman. He says, and therefore, see that your excuses for not preaching the gospel to others who are heading to hell are flimsy. If you see people around you and you can see they are heading to hell and you are not doing anything about it, then you can't say that you have love. And like, you know, like I said, that you love them. You know, like I said, then you will know that there is no excuse watching people going to hell. I pray that the Lord will help you and I. That as many that are around us, we will exhibit love to them by preaching the word of God. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. So he says, if you love them just as Jesus loves you, you will be willing to lose anything so that they will not go to hell. What are you willing to lose? What are you sacrificing in ensuring that you preach to people around you? In ensuring that you preach to people that are far and wide? So that at the end of the day, you can populate the kingdom of God and depopulate the kingdom of hell. I pray in the name of Jesus that the Lord will help us and give us grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Like Adadi has also said that some people somewhere also, you know, did it. They lost their lives. They paid that sacrifice in ensuring that you and I are on our path to heaven. So we can also neglect others. You know, we have listened to the gospel. We've been privileged to accept the Lord as our Lord and our personal Savior. Likewise, we should help others too by demonstrating this love. Because in showing it, in demonstrating it, then we can confidently say that indeed we love God. I pray that the Lord will help you and I in Jesus' name. Amen. The key point, if you truly love God, you will be ready to sacrifice anything to ensure you preach the gospel to the unsaved and bring them to Christ. I pray in the name of Jesus that the grace to sacrifice, the grace to preach to the unsaved, you know, that spirit of love, we, you know, will be abundant in us. We will exhibit it mightily and we'll be able to sacrifice in ensuring that we bring the unsaved to Christ in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for being part of the review for today. God bless you. Amen.